Now we can look at chemical kinetics, and kinetics is just the study of the rate at which a chemical process occurs. Later on in the chapter, we're going to look at reaction mechanisms, and that's looking at exactly how the reaction occurs, so looking at what molecules are, are actually interacting. Um, you'll look a lot at reaction mechanisms when you get to organics, so you'll see that again. So let's start with some factors that affect the rates of the reaction. So there are four that we're going to talk about. Uh, the first one is the physical state of the reactants. And that's just really saying that in order to react, molecules have to come in contact with each other. They have to touch each other. They have to hit each other. So the more uh, homogeneous the mixture is, the easier it is for them to find each other. And then the faster the, the molecules will react. So this has to do with the more homogeneous the mixture of the reactants, the faster the reaction will happen. Um, concentration. So these are two pictures showing different, you know, concentrations. So burning this in 20% oxygen or burning this in 100% oxygen, you can see when you have more oxygen, when you have a higher concentration of your reactants, um, the reaction happens a lot, uh, a lot faster. So um, as the concentration increases, then the molecules are going to be able to find them, find each other more quickly. Uh, they'll collide more often, and if you increase the frequency of the collisions, then you're going to increase the rate. So when molecules, and we're going to talk about collision theory later on in the chapter too, and that's just really looking at molecules have to collide in order to react. And not every time they collide, do they will they react? They have to collide with the right amount of energy. They have to have the right orientation. There's a lot of other factors that that are involved. So the more often they collide, the more likely a reaction will happen. All those factors will line up. Temperature, um, temperature is related to kinetic energy, and so the more, the higher the temperature, the more kinetic energy molecules are going to have. They're going to be moving faster. They're going to get collide more often, uh, and they're more likely to have the the right amount of energy in order to to react. So we'll we'll study. Uh, we're going to do two labs. Um, in both labs, we'll look at how concentration affects the reaction, and then in the second lab, we'll look at how temperature also affects the, the rate of the reaction. And you'll see that at higher temperatures, the reaction will happen faster in general. Um, rule of thumb is for every 10 degree increase, the reaction rate should double. That's really kind of a, a you know, just a rule of thumb. It's not uh, set in stone. Um, so most reactions are going to happen faster at higher temperatures, and you've seen this in, in real life. Um, if you leave milk out on the counter, it's going to go bad pretty quickly. If you put it in the refrigerator, right, but the temperature is lower, you're going to slow down that process, and then it'll last a little bit longer. Uh, and the last one we're going to look at, the last factor, again, we're on factors that affect the rate of the reaction. So we said a physical state, so is it homogeneous? If so, it'll, it'll happen faster. If you have higher concentrations of reactants, the reaction will happen faster. If you have a higher temperature, the reaction should happen faster. Um, and then finally, the presence of a catalyst. So catalysts are uh, molecules that you add to your reaction that speed up the reaction. Um, by changing the mechanism. So mechanism is you know, what molecules are interacting. And so the catalyst will actually provide a, a new pathway, a new mechanism for the reaction to happen. Catalysts are not consumed during the course of the reaction, so they're not used up. Um, what else? So just a couple take home messages here. The more readily the molecules collide, the more rapidly, rapidly they're going to react. And uh, you need frequent co collisions because you need to have enough energy to break the bonds and you have to have the right orientation to form new bonds. So the more collisions you have, the, the more likelihood um, a, a good, uh, you know, they'll, all these things will align and you'll get the reaction to happen. Uh, reaction rates. So we've mentioned a little bit about reaction rates. So when you're driving your car, you look at you know how fast you're going. What's what's the rate? How, how many miles are you going per hour? What's your change in distance over your change in time? Um, for chemical reactions, the the rate that you're looking at is the change in concentration over the change in time. So if you had this reaction here, um, so you have this reaction. So you have a reactant turning into a product there. Um, and suppose you're able to measure this concentration over the course of the reaction. So you measure it at a bunch of different times. And so you get a little chart that looks like this. And at you know, zero time, and you know, initially you have 0.1 molar concentration. And this is your reactant. And then you measure it 50 seconds later, and you can see that it's going down because reactants are going to get used up over the course of the reaction. If you were measuring the products, then the product should, that concentration should increase because you're making that. But this is a reactant, so it's going to be decreasing over time. And so the way that you can measure the rate of the reaction is just that change in concentration over the change in the time. And the reason why we have a negative sign there is because this is a reactant, and so we said reactants are always going to decrease in concentration over the course of the reaction. So let me just show you this calculation using this data up here. 
Um, so let's just look at between like 50, at zero, time zero and 50 seconds, and then these are our two concentrations. So the rate is going to be, um, if I just looked at the final minus initial, so that's 0 0.0905 minus 0.1 and then I have final seconds is 50 seconds minus my initial right I would end up with a negative number there I would get a negative 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2 uh, molar per second and I want rates are always positive we always want the rate to be positive so if I put a negative sign in front of there that'll make that positive so I only have to add that little negative sign for reactants, um, because reactants, when you do final minus initial, this number right here is always going to be negative. So in order to make the rate positive, we put a negative in front. If we were just looking at the product, change of concentration of the product over time is always going to be positive, because you're always making the product. So, And there's a relationship between these two. If you know how the reactant's changing, you can figure out how the products are changing um, using the stoichiometry of the reaction. And we'll, we'll do that in a little bit. Um, so the average rate decreases as the um, reaction proceeds, and that's happening. Um, so if you look at these rates, they're, they're decreasing as the reaction goes on uh, because the molecules are getting used up, so it's harder to find them. So you're going to have fewer coll collisions later on in the, in the um, reaction. Um, so let's try another one of these. So we have here A. This reaction just looks like you know, A turning into, oops, turning into B. Um, and we start off with point, uh, one molar, and then uh, it gets one molar, one mole of A. And this is in one liter, so one mole over one liter is just one molar. We don't have any B to start off with, and then we go down to 20 seconds later, we go down to 0.54 moles of A and 0.46 moles of B, and then it goes down even more, 0.3 moles of A, 0.7 moles of B. If you notice, A plus B always has to equal one, just because we start off with one one mole of A, and this is a one to one reaction here. One, one mole of this gets used up for every one mole of this that's made. Um, so this one they want to know what is calculate the average rate at which A disappears. So we're focusing on A and we're looking at it at 20 seconds to 40 seconds. So we're looking at the difference again just in A. A is a reactant, right? So we're going to look at the rate of A. How is A changing? Uh, it's going to be negative. Our final minus initial. So our final here is 0.3 minus 0.54 divided by final time is 40, initial time is 20. So when you work all that out, you get 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2 molar per second. Um, and you know what? I gave you the wrong number up here. Now that I'm looking at it, I looked at the wrong thing. This is 1.9 times 10 to the negative 4. I was looking at this answer down here. Sorry about that. Um, now we can look at calculate the average rate of appearance of B over the time interval from 0 to 40. So now since B is a product, we can just do the final minus initial and it's going to be positive. Remember, rates are always going to be positive. So from 0 to 40, I have 0 0.7 minus 0 over 40 minus 0. And that should give us like 1.75 times 10 to the negative 2, which I'm going to round up to just 1.8 times 10 to the negative 2. And I'm going to put it in molar per second. Um, these are in moles, but it's over 1 liter. So moles over liters gives us a concentration. Um, and there we go.